To take measurements inside a bore, I always use my calipers. And for me, it works perfectly fine. But if, for example, I want to take measurements in a part that took like this one with a recess, two different diameters, the big diameter I can do with my calipers, but the smaller one, my calipers don't fit in here. And this is where the snap gauges come in handy. Most people know, of course, how it works, these uh, spring little, little, little things. And then you can measure with your calipers or with the micrometer. But of course, I don't have any snap gauges. But what could be handy is using some kind of calipers, a little bit like this one. But of course, with the feet to the exterior. This one is very handy to take a measurement on this side, a thickness, but to measure a bar, we need this shape. That of course also I don't have. Of course, I could buy this kind of calipers. I checked and for about five of your local mollies, you can buy one. But buy, where is the fun in this? Let's make one. My idea is to make something that looks more or less like this one but of course with the feet bent out and I think I have exactly the right material to do so. This is a 5 mm flat bar, 5 and I think it's 40. Let's make one. What's nice is I have enough to screw up several times, but uh, the plan is not to screw up, of course. Before I start to cut out the two legs I have to make out of this thing here, I would like to clean up the surfaces here in the shaper and using the shear tool. It makes a really nice finish. But this little vise, too small. There's too much stick out here and I think it's gonna flex. So this one, not gonna work. I can of course install this vise on the shaper. Piece of cake. And for the length, this one will be perfect. It's just that the height, I can't combine my whole collection of parallels here to find the exact height to install my part here. This one too low and combine others is uh, too high and that's not gonna work. But if I come here to the milling machine and I use a pair of the smallest parallels I have and put them in here, but horizontal, not vertical. And I use these that I put on top, on top, okay. And my part fits perfectly well and there's a tiny bit of stick out, just enough to cut the surface. So this time, no shaper, but milling machine. And to clean up the surfaces I will use this Viewer Gift face mill that uh, last time I used it on bearing bronze and it worked magnificently well. And uh, I never really uh, made parts with it on steel so let's give it a try. It cuts very nicely, but the finish it leaves is not really spectacular. But maybe with a little bit more speed.
Nope. More or less, same result. And I even have a little bit of chatter here. Maybe the camera picks it up, I don't know. Okay, I already marked more or less here on this side where I have to cut it into. But before I cut, maybe it's a good idea to first drill holes where the center bolt will come. Because after cutting I will have two wedges. Which could give a little bit of work holding problem. So first, drill. To cut my part here in two, of course I could use an angle grinder or maybe a hacksaw, but I have machines and I like to play with my machines. And I think this is a really nice occasion to test this slitting saw that I never used before. And because I don't have uh, many flight hours uh, sli slitting saws uh, things in two, uh, I think this will be a good experience. Oops, I changed the angle a bit, now it's gonna cut less deep than it was before. And first I will feed by hand, see what happens. This seems to work. Right, engage auto feed. Success. The trick will be now to make this thing look like this thing. But before I start machining on this, because as you can see, of course, here I don't have the same height, and on the other side, also problem, and. Of course I installed this kind of screw, nice and deep, and I will cut off this bolt so I can put it in a vise and then machine this side and this side. And to prevent it from moving while machining, it's maybe a good idea to weld these two points together. Some time ago I found at the tram depot a box with a whole mix of old welding rods and I wanted to know if they still work and so I took them all out and as you can see these here they fall in pieces so this one not good anymore but the one 
I have here in the box, they are in perfect condition. So I suppose these can stand way better humidity. And I checked online, this is a 6013. So it's an all round welding rod in all directions. So good stuff. Of course, because of humidity, uh, I don't want to make uh, some structural things with it, but uh, to make coat hangers and maybe uh, calipers. Good enough. Yes. I think that for old welding rods, they weld very well. Whatever. Right, I uh, made some outlines here. It's hard to see on camera, but outlines and because it's a long and small part to cut this out I think the ideal machine is of course the shaper and because the little vise is still too small I will install the bigger one I think the shaper did a very good job cutting these uh, surfaces here, quick and easy. It's just that on the return stroke it left here a little bit indents in the surface, but whatever. Now, to cut the radius I want to have on this thing here, of course I could use the milling machine and a rotary table. But I don't have a rotary table. Another solution could also be Bell Sender, really multifunctional machine. Right. I think that now the time has come to separate these parts, which means cut off the weld. All that's left to do now is make a bend here on this side and on this side, of course, to make the feet. And I think I have maybe a little idea how to do so. If I take whatever piece of scrap and I drill two holes 10 mm because I have a little stud here that will cut in two 10 mm. I put two pins in here and then I can squeeze my part in and bend it. Right, 
Let's see if this thing actually works. Looks like All right, I will give you the touch of file to finish it, but I think this thing works very well. To prevent this little screw here from binding, I will mess up a little bit the threads on the other side with a center point. Yes. I suppose all that's left to do now is to see if indeed it works. I have a little pipe with a nice and clean bore in it that I wanted to use maybe to make an engine or something this rather precise. I installed a micrometer and I have to check the diameter machine here. So first this one. Twenty eight point forty. Same piece, calipers. Twenty eight point thirty nine. It works. <laughs> 